for your praise leader and the pastor to be with one accord. Because I didn't talk to him about the message this morning about what I was going to talk about. But he started talking about healing and receiving healing. And for some reason or another, the Lord moved upon my heart to talk about healing today and the reality of it and how the enemy has almost wiped out of the church the belief in divine healing. Amen. How many of you know when God blesses the church with something, the enemy will attack that thing so much until today's Christians don't really believe anymore in divine healing. Oh, glory to God. But I want you to know divine healing is a reality. So y'all just pray for me today that I can get this message over to you, that I can communicate it, and uh, I think we're going to be all right. Our, um, our foundational text, I used to love to hear preachers say text. I used to always wonder, what was he talking about there? Our foundational scripture is going to come from Acts 10 and 38. We're going to ask that we can put that up on the board. And I just want you all to follow me on this today because I really want to, I really hope, here's, here's what I prayed on the way coming up to the pulpit, Sister Tommy. I prayed, I said, Lord, enable me to bring a message with such clarity that the unbelief that's present in the room at the top of the sermon won't be there at the end of the sermon. Glory. Amen? Glory to God. And you know, you can't do that with, ah! Like we love to do in the black church. My people are destroyed for lack of for lack of knowledge. Amen? So, let me find my glasses. Acts 10 and, uh, and 38. Let me see, could I find it? Because I got the wrong book. I got Corinthians. It's a good thing for the pastor to, to be on the right page. Acts 10 and 38. We bless the Lord today. It says this. The word of God says this. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good pay close attention to this healing some what does it say? Oh. oh healing all that were possessed of the devil for God was with him. Isn't that wonderful? That Jesus healed everyone that approached him with a need in this particular text. And here's what's so amazing about Acts 10 and 38. If you study the history of it, all the people that came Jason were unsaved. These were not church folk. Amen. Because you know, a prophet is without honor sometimes in his own home. It has been my experience, I have found, that a lot of times it's easier to get unsaved people delivered than it is to get church folk. Oh, help me up in here. But I want you to pay close attention to this. Notice what it said. How God anointed, what's another word for anointed? Empowered. How God empowered Jesus of Nazareth. The, the context of this text is trying to present Jesus as a normal person. I hope y'all get it. That's why I gave where he was from. He's from Nazareth. Amen. You know, right over here, right around the corner. Now, there's a teaching in the church that's really confusing to God's people. It's true, but it's confusing. Jesus is God manifested in the flesh. 
How many of you know that? Amen. That teaching is in the church. He is God. He says, when you've seen me, you've seen the Father. So since we understand that Jesus is God, here's where the church makes a mistake. We seem to think that the miracles that he did, he did it as God. That's a mistake. In, 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 in Bible college, there's a fancy word that they use. In describing Jesus, they call him a theo homo sapien. He's a God man. Or oh, help me up in here. He's a God man. The reason why Acts 10 and 38 is here is to let you know that the reason why Jesus was able to heal all is because God empowered him, Shanti. Mm -hmm. He couldn't do it on his own. Oh, God, are y'all catching me? Wait a minute. Because if Jesus healed as God, we can't do it because we ain't God. Amen. But he said to us, greater works shall you do. Amen. Wait a minute. I'm trying to get you to understand that this healing anointing has been available and to the church. I know church folk right now who don't understand their authority. Because when I was a younger pastor, it would make me feel good that a church member would call and say, Pastor, I need you to come over to the house and pray for my mother. She's sick. As I got older and became a more mature pastor, it started disturbing me. Because obviously I've not taught you well enough that God is no respecter of persons. You don't have to call the bishop to do what God has given you Amen. the power and the authority to do. Oh, help me, Jesus. I'm reminded of a story. Y'all just pray for me. Father called his son and said, look, go down to the, the dealership. I've already bought you a car. Everything is paid for. The only thing you got to do is go down there and let them give you the keys and drive off with it. Amen. You know what the young man did? He didn't believe everything his father said, so he went down to the dealership and applied for financing. He wanted to work to get something that was a gift. Oh, my help me up in here. That's the mindset of God's people. We feel we got to earn, we got to do something to be able to walk into the privilege, the things that he's already made available to us. Didn't he say in his word, greater works shall you do? Wait a minute, how can you do greater works if Jesus did the work as God? He did the greater works as a man filled with the power of God, just like you. How many of y'all getting this? Yeah. All glory to God. In, in Matthew 10, he made a statement. He said, heal the sick, raise the dead. Women, women. Heal the sick, raise the dead. He never said, Jason, you call me when you have this problem, and I'll meet you over there and I'll do it for you. He said, you do it. Amen. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me up in here. Amen. We got church folk today who thinks the power of God resides in leadership. And unfortunately, we have pastors for the sake of control. They want to keep the congregation ignorant. I need job security, so I got to teach that you got to call me. Amen. Amen. 
Because if you find out you can do it yourself, you, you might stop paying your tithes. You might stop, amen. But God has meant, he's no respecter of person. Jesus said to you, heal the sick. He never said, try to do it. Oh my God. Acts 10 38 says how Jesus, how God empowered Jesus. Oh God. See, you don't have the power to heal. But through your faith, you have power to release Jesus Amen. to heal. Amen. Only thing he's trying to get you to do is have enough courage to step out Amen. and initiate this process. Amen. Amen. Oh my God, oh my God. Y'all just have to pray for me today. Pray for me today. I'm not going I'm, I'm not, I'm not to rush. Even though God empowered Jesus to do this, not only did he empower him to do it, God came and gave Jesus a private session on how to do it. Mm -hmm. Go over to John chapter 5, please. Y'all just pray for me today. I'm not going to be long, but I want to be a blessing today. Hallelujah. I want you to leave here empowered, knowing that you have the anointing to heal.